Thank you.
learn about a couple other uh, companies. So if you haven't already found the bathrooms, they're in the back corner. I'm pointing at them right now in the corridor there. Um, and if you hadn't already discovered, we have food and a bar. So, all right, I think we're good to go. All right, well, first of all, welcome to MindsDB's office. This is our HQ here in San Francisco. Thank you very much for coming. You may or may not have been to some of our events before, but we run a lot of events here in this office in the last four months that we've, we've opened the office. MindsDB obviously being an open source company, we open the doors to companies who are also open source and people in the community to come and run their own events here. So if you want to learn about any of those events, just go on our Luma calendar. Um, if you go Luma, l.u.ma slash MindsDB, you'll see that we have a calendar of events which is always full of cool stuff going on in San Francisco's AI community. But we also run our own events, and this is an example of one of those with partner companies. Um, we're gonna be introducing some really cool technology that's been built, um, and we're gonna be doing these kinds of events every month. Something like a conference, a summit, where you can come and learn about this technology that we're building and hear from some of the leaders in the industry. I'm just gonna tell you a couple of quick things before we kick on. Um, we're running a little bit late. Um, nonetheless, we're going to keep the, the speeches to the same amount of time. Um, so expect that things will take about an hour and a half to two hours before we close. We have a couple of great companies here presenting with us. We want to thank these guys for participating. Thank you to OpenBB, Nixler, Langchain, and Llama Index for coming up and, and presenting the new FinAI tech stack. If you're... I think we've skipped one. Um, if you hadn't already seen, out in the corridor there, there are some shirts in the back, and those shirts are um, shirts for this event. If you tweet about the event and just hashtag MindsDB, you can go into the running to win all those shirts. You just need to show it at the, at the front there. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce Jorge Torres, the CEO of MindsDB. Uh, by the way, you, you should tag not just uh, MindsDB, but Nixla, uh, Langchain, uh, and Lama Index and MindsDB, all of them. The idea of the idea of the AI Collective is to guarantee that we create a space for people to share ideas, to share amazing things that they're building in AI. And we were having a, a barbecue at Didier's house, and we were talking about how many of the, of the events that are happening, or at least that happened in 2023, um, are showing a lot about the things about the future with AI and you know, like the things that people could be building. But we thought that it would be interesting to showcase what people can actually build today. Um, not tomorrow, not next year, but the things that people can actually ship into production today with um, this technology and to make it very tangible, especially, you know, there are so many applications in the space of uh, financial services. And, and, and I think that this is a great opportunity for us to showcase that. And in particularly, uh, or in particular, sorry, English is not my first language. Um, in particular, um, all connecting to OpenBB, which if you haven't tried it, uh, I invite you to do it because it's a wonderful platform to access all kinds of different data um, that is either publicly available or available through other providers, but centralized to one single platform. I don't want to butcher the, the, the pitch, but uh, I personally love it. Um, I lost a few dollars trying to invest in the past, but with data, then I, I think that I've, I've made better decisions. But for, for the people that do it for real, uh, this is a really, really fantastic tool. And then combined with the power of, of AI and machine learning, then uh, even more fantastic. So, um, yeah, so we want you to see real things, demos. That's kind of like the objective today. And um, I'm just going to repeat the thing that, that Ian said, just kind of like try to get a T-shirt, share about MyZB, share about Mixla, share about Langchain, Llama Index, and, of course, OpenVB. Um, okay, I will hand it over to Didier, but first let me explain to you kind of like a basis of the stack. One of the, at least for me personally, one of the interesting opportunities that OpenBB brings to the table is that you don't have to start with your data. You can start with data that is you know, available either through public sources or through other providers that are data for you. Um, and therefore, you don't have to be concerned about like clogging your, your data warehouses, or which you can do, 
but OpenBB already opened the door for you to make very interesting projects just with the data they provide. They pro aggregate more than 100 or 120 different data sources. And once you plug it into data, MindDB's job is to be able to see anything that um, can be accessed through Python as a virtual table or as a virtual database. And therefore, anything that is in OpenBB can be uh, queried in traditional SQL. That's kind of like the, the integration that we work with here. And then once you do that, MindDB also allows you to bring as virtual tables uh, fantastic, amazing uh, ML frameworks and AI frameworks and combine those two. So you can do things with Nixla for forecasting on time series data. You can do things with uh, Langchain to build agents on top of um, information that exists on OpenBB. You can use Llama Index to, to build like retrieval systems that are um, you know, the, the basis for knowledge spaces. And I'll show you some of that uh, from the perspective of MyCB, but each of us is going to give you a different taste of what's available today. Anyway, I'm gonna hand over to the air and hope that you like it. Can you hear me? Is that working? I'm assuming it is. So hi everyone, I'm the co-founder and CEO of OpenBB. And today I'm gonna talk a bit about um, what is the OpenBB platform, but also a bit of our story, how we got started, and I'll, I'll keep it quick. Um, my background is a, a developer, so I'm not, I'm like, I didn't have any financial experience. And going from being a developer to starting investing, it really sucked, like, <laughs> that's the word, sorry. Um, but it really sucked because the reality is that as a developer, everything is optimized for efficiency. And so you go into the investment world and everything is manual. So like you're taking screenshots of whatever you're seeing on a dashboard, you're putting into a Word document, writing some, wor writing some words. And then next week, you're doing the same. And like, it's just data at the end of the day. Like you just change the ticker, you change like the endpoint, but it's like there's no reason why this shouldn't be automated. And so um, like basically the back story is like almost three years ago, my uh, flight got canceled, so I couldn't visit my parents because of Christmas, and I had a week on my hands, so I started building the op OpenBB terminal. At the time, it was called GameStonk Terminal. Um, and so is that guy there in blue, OpenBB Terminal. And so today, this is what the OpenBB ecosystem looks like, and I'll explain you a bit what the terminal is. But the terminal ultimately is a way to have access to financial data, um, but we don't own the data. We basically sit at the intersection between data providers and users. And so we don't focus on like the, the, the owning the data, but we create this positive ecosystem where there's users and there's data providers and we are standardizing the data. And that's what the platform is. So the platform allows you to have access to this data through uh, endpoints or using like Python. Um, I'll show you that in the next slide. Um, then we also have the OpenBB bot, which allows you to have access to financial data on a chatting app like Discord or Telegram. This is fully free. Um, there's been more like than 2.8 million like requests in terms of like accessing financial data, which is insane. And like, yeah, it's, it's, it's great if you just are on the go and you just want to check the price of, of something or dark pools or any more exotic data set. And then finally on the left side, what you see is the Excel Adin and Terminal Pro, and this is where we uh, are uh, enterprise products. Um, so these are the closed source front end, but it's built on an open source platform. Um, and I'm gonna talk more about this at the end of this presentation. So yeah, what is the OpenBB platform? As I said, in a way it connects like data sources with uh, users, whatever you want to build. If you just want to put together a quick notebook to check uh, what's going on, or if you want to create like a full like analysis workflow, you can do it uh, and we standardize the data for you. So if it comes from data source A and B and you want to combine those data sets, you read our documentation once and you know how to use it. And so at the end of the day is the three endpoints and you're ready to go. The, the account login is not even necessary. The reason why we do it is we manage your API keys. So because the users have control of the data they are uh, having access to, we have a, a, our OpenBB Hub that basically uh, you set all your API keys there, whether there's a premium or you are paying for them or they are free because you just signed up to a data source, we manage that for you and then you just set up the, the personal access token and so when you have access to the data, it just, it just works. Um, and so these are the, the links for reference. So yeah, three, three, uh, three lines of code, that's what it takes. And then one thing that we did uh, was when we started the terminal, I mean, yeah, I wasn't like that, I hadn't um, 
built like a scalable system before. And so I didn't have a, well, well insight is a beautiful thing, right? Anyway, um, <laughs> so this year we spent a lot of resources in basically refactoring the platform code with, with Pydantic. And one of the reasons we are so excited about this is because of the, the uh, entire like AI workflows that now you can build on top. Because this means that now all of our endpoints have Pydantic data models uh, behind in terms of input and output. And so it means that when you use like agents, you can tell what data to, to expect and you can use uh, the Pydantic tool as a validation like library. And so what you see there, uh, the first uh, area is the input. And so you have the commands name and we have a list of like 100 plus commands. Then you've got whether it's OpenVB, which is what we standardize. So that means that for equity price historical, you'll always have this type of fields. So symbol, start date, end date. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, and then you have the doc string as well. And then that's for OpenVB. But if uh, we are using a different data provider, you'll change the OpenVB there and you'll see all the fields and query params for input and data for output. And so as you'll be able to see in the next presentations, this is super powerful. Uh, and I don't think there's any other like financial data provider that does that, or at least not as well uh, as us. But I'm biased, so. <laughs> um, I think with that said, I think um, I can introduce Arison uh, from Langchain, which um, should be presenting something that relies on the OpenBB platform. So, yeah. There we go. All right, awesome. Uh, thank you for hosting this MindCB, and thank you to the OpenBB team for throwing this and organizing this. Uh, my name is Harrison, co-founder CEO of Langchain. Uh, Langchain is a company formed around the open source package, which is uh, a developer tooling to make it easy to build LLM applications. Um, and so this is a little diagram that we've put together to kind of uh, show the, the link chain ecosystem as a whole. And so just I'll cover this quickly and then I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, something that the OpenBV team actually built on top of link chain that's really, really cool and, and perfectly shows off I think a lot of the really interesting trends and things that are on the forefront of a lot of uh, uh, LLM apps these days. Really quickly about link chain, most people think of us as this part here which is the open source packages that consists of uh, a base uh, layer of interfaces for a bunch of different things um, that you're gonna need to build LLM apps like models, vector stores, uh, tools, document loaders, things like that, and then also in expression language to compose them together to create longer chains and agents, and we'll see some examples of those. Then we have a bunch of integrations with a bunch of different tools, so we don't have our own language models, we don't have our own vector stores, we integrate with uh, a bunch of other ones, and then we implement uh, uh, a bunch of uh, wrappers around tools, wrappers to split text, to manage text, things like that. And then up above that, you get into the fun stuff, which is chains and agents, and are, those are basically pre-built configurations for doing question answering over SQL data, uh, question answering over documents that you might have, some of the agentic stuff. Um, and then the other thing that I wanna highlight is LangSmith, um, which is a platform on the side um, it does a bunch of things in the ops space, like testing, evaluation, uh, monitoring. Um, but one of the main things that people use it for is just debugging what's going on inside your applications. And so, as we see when we'll talk about the agent that OpenDB built, it gets incredibly complex pretty quickly. And, and understand, and uh, you know, the big piece, the new piece at the center of all these applications is this non-deterministic language model that's you know sometimes really finicky and hard to debug. And so, understanding what exactly is going on in your application. Um, what the inputs and outputs to each step are, are really important. And so um, I'll, I'm gonna finish by showing a pretty cool demo of what it looks like under the hood for this agent to be working. But running uh, uh, really quickly through the agent that the OpenBB team built, um, the first thing, and, and probably, honestly, probably the most important thing when people are considering building agents, and by agents I mean an application that is really driven by the language model, so the language model's determining what to do in a lot of cases, and then executing on that, and then getting the result, and then determining what to do next. The most important thing is uh, the tools that you give it access to. Um, so these are really application specific. If you're asking an agent to respond to emails, it needs to have access 
to an email client to write emails and to read previous emails and to maybe see your calendar to schedule things, right? And so a lot of work needs to go in to selecting the tools um, that the agent can have access to. And so um, there's a lot of different endpoints that the OpenBB team, as mentioned earlier, kind of like exposes and makes easy to have access to these financial uh, uh, data APIs. And so uh, one of the things that uh, they do is, in fact, there's so many tools that they want to create a uh, mapping so that you can easily access a subset of those tools. And basically the reason for that is if you try to give an agent 100 tools, it's gonna get really confused about what to do right now. At least they're not good enough to parse all of those. And so typically we've found a sweet spot to be somewhere between like five and 15 tools that you give an agent access to. And so one of the things that you can do is dynamically based on the user's question, you can select what tools are relevant for that. Um, and you can do that kind of like as a pre-processing step ahead of time. And so we can create a, a vector store index over those tools to dynamically select the ones that you want. And so uh, building up towards this idea of an AI powered financial analyst, um, we can see some of the prompts that are used here. Um, and so if the most important thing is the tools, the second most important thing in an agent, or maybe, the, you know, I'm not gonna debate one or two, but the other really important thing is the prompts that you use. Again, like the main new thing that's powering a lot of these are language models. And so it all comes down to really interacting with the language model. And the way, main way you do that is with these prompts. Um, and, and so this is kind of like the system message that is, is, is used at the, the beginning to kind of like help drive it. You can see here uh, the, uh, the things that it's expected to generate. So one of the really cool things about this agent is it doesn't just try to spin in a loop and decide what to do. It actually generates kind of like a bunch of sub questions and then answers those and then combines it at the end. And this is a really, really effective pattern that we've seen across a few uh, different um, applications. So, you know, I, it, so this is one example. GPT Research is another really cool open source project that does the same kind of like sub question generation and then answering. And I think it allows these agents to answer more and more complex problems. So, so this is uh, a bunch of information about sub questions to generate. Um, this breaks it down into uh, smaller kind of like tasks. Um, then the tool retrieval happens. Uh, so this is a function you can see here that we're using the vector store to retrieve the tools um, that, that it needs. Um, and then this gets those tools for each sub-question. So each sub-question basically fetches the relevant tools that are needed um, and then creates an agent with those tools. Um, and so here you can see uh, basically the, the now prompts for those individual agents. So now this agent has the high-level question, the sub-question, it's got the five tools that are, or five however many tools that are specific to that task, um, and then continues from there. Um, and then uh, this kind of like, get in, this gets combined into a LangChain React agent. You can see here we're using uh, uh, one of the new things, the, the LangChain expression language to create kind of like the, the agent logic here. Um, and so that's the runtime that, that I mentioned earlier. And then you get uh, to the end with uh, this final uh, agent, which after it gets all the sub-agents, it then gets all the, the information from those and combines it into a final answer. Um, and then returns an, an output from that. Um, and so this is a great uh, diagram. Again, 100% credit to the OpenBB team for this. I am merely uh, you know, presenting their amazing work and you'll see a live demo that Didier does later. So excited to see that. But you can see here that you have the main question come in and then decomposes it into a bunch of uh, smaller tasks. For each small task, it fetches the list of relevant tools that come from the OpenBB platform it then finish, it, it does all those subtasks and then it gives it to a final agent or a final chain that responds based on all of the answers. Um, and so taking a look at some of the results um, and we'll see a video I think of this later, um, but you can ask questions like this, check what our, our Tesla peers and then check which one has the highest market cap, then on the ticker that has the highest market cap. And so a, a pretty complex kind of like question with a bunch of different steps. Um, and you can see here that it kind of like answers all of those and, and provides some nice background um, and, and, and some data as well. And so we're, we'll see a video demo of that later, but what I wanna show is what that also looks like behind the scenes in Langsmith. And so Langsmith is uh, the tool that we build on the side to help debug or to do a bunch of things, but one of the main things is debug and just track what's going on. And so here we can see, um, starting from here, the, this from this, are all the calls that are made in this uh, uh, agent. 
and so, or this, this system. So the first one is this. Let's see how well the internet's doing. All right, here we go. So this is the first one that generates the sub question. So you can see kind of like the exact um, steps of what's happening. You've got the prompt template. You've, you can click into this and kind of like see what the input is, what the output is, click in the metadata, see the, the information. You can go uh, to the LLM, see what it's using, see what the parameters are. Um, if you want to play around with it, you can jump into a playground and modify it. And so this is really, really handy for debugging when a prompt might go bad in the middle of, you know, 10 steps. If, if the third one goes wrong, how are you going to like recreate that exact state? You can easily open it up in a playground here. Um, and so that's the first one that generates the sub-questions. And you, you've got all these retrievers, which are retrieving the tools that it wants to use. Um, so these are retrieving the tools that it wants to use. From there, you have five different agent executors. So let's look at this one. Um, and you can see that it's got this uh, sequence of steps. You can expand it. You can see exactly what's going on. It's making a call to a language model. Um, this, is, this is all of the prompt engineering that was done. Um, if we scroll down, we can see the, the output, which is an action. From there, it calls the tool with that input. It gets back this response. Um, which is then passed again to the agent, and it responds with a final answer. So it synthesizes that kind of like API data. And then finally, at the end, we have this runnable sequence, which is created with the, the language and expression language that really just creates um, this, this prompt combining all the results, and you get back this output that you saw back in the uh, PowerPoint there. So I think you'll, you'll see a video of this later on, and I think it will be like, I, I don't know how long the video is, but I think the point is, that I'm trying to make is there's a lot of really, really complex stuff going on behind the scenes. And as we start to um, you know, play around with this tech more and more, it's only been out for a year, as we start to play around with it more and more, I think we're gonna start seeing a lot of these equivalently really complex systems that deal with data in a bunch of really interesting ways start to emerge. Um, so yeah, that, that's all I've got. If people want to play around with LangSmith, um, it's in private beta, but we, we have an access code here, so please don't tweet this out, but feel free to use it to play around with it. Um, and yeah, thanks again for everyone for uh, coming, and, and thanks for Didier and uh, the whole uh, MindsDB team for throwing this. Really excited for this. The chick. That's perfect. All right, thank you very much, Harrison. And next up, we have Nixla. We have Max and Azul from Nixla. No, not yet. Amazing, thanks. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you so much, Didier, for having us here. Thank you, Jorge, for hosting this. It's a pleasure to be back at what we consider our home. We did a TimeGPT's launch at this precise venue three months ago, and we are privileged <coughs> and happy to be uh, sharing a new presentation and new results uh, with you. Uh, I, I see some people recording. I think there is a live stream and there is going to be a recording. So can you confirm Ian, that that's the case? So probably that's going to be a better quality than your cell phone. But thanks again for, for, for the interest. Uh, so Nixla, I'm, I'm Max. I'm CEO and co-founder of, of Nixla. Today with me is going to be Azul, who is also co-founder and CTO of Nixla. And Nixla is a time series research and deployment company. And today we're going to try to do both, a little bit of research and a little bit of deployment. So what is time series research and what's the problem that we're trying to solve? And time series research is the systematic approach to try to predict the future, to try to quantify the uncertainty about future events. And that's extremely relevant because it helps us plan and anticipate what's gonna come next. And 
Time series research enables many different things, such as predicting ocean tides, uh, predicting product demand to do inventory optimization and waste reduction. It also allows uh, to predict things like IoT sensors, web traffic, and of course, it helps us do uh, financial uh, forecasting. During the last two years or so, at Nixla, we created what's now probably the most comprehensive and we claim the best time series ecosystem in the world. That uh, whole set of libraries is being used by some of the most uh, prominent uh, companies in the world, such as Microsoft, Amazon, Walmart, Stripe, LinkedIn, Lyft, and it empowers many different use cases, such as predictive maintenance, uh, demand forecasting, ETC. And during those two last years, we definitely learned a lot. We spoke uh, a lot with the members of the open source community. We tried to understand the different pain points that they were trying to solve. But one particular thing stood out, namely that forecasting is extremely hard, confusing, and expensive. You need a whole set of uh, different uh, team members, data scientists, data engineers, some of them with very sophisticated mathematical knowledge to try to assert the best way to train the models. You need also uh, specialized people to deploy those models because there are specific things about time series model where you have to retrain them normally if you want to predict the next step, and that causes some uh, sort of issues when you deploy this kind of systems to production. So in reality, only a few uh, companies are able to do this right, and it's extremely, extremely complicated. So we were thinking, how do we solve this problem? How do we help practitioners like yourself uh, deploy state-of-the-art forecasting pipelines without the need to spend millions of dollars in a sophisticated, complicated, diverse team? And while we're trying to solve that problem, thankfully, the whole Gen AI revolution happened. So we started thinking, what if we could do the same that OpenAI with GPT did to text, and maybe Stability did to images, and maybe other companies did also to text and images. What if we could do that to data? What if we could apply that same principle of generative pre-trained transformers, out-of-the-box solutions, to time series? And that's when we released TimeGPT1, uh, which is the first generative AI model for, for temporal data. In other words, is the first foundational model for time series. And this is extremely exciting because if you don't have to train your own model, if you can just do the inference, then it's not only a lot more accurate, or what we have shown is that zero shot with time GPT is very accurate, but it's only so orders of magnitude faster, both in time to value, in like the amount of time that you spend coding, and also in the uh, actual predictions, because you are not paying for the training you are just paying for the inferences in, time, in, in, in terms of time. So what's very exciting is that now you can start doing forecasting and state-of-the-art uh, pipelines without a specialized uh, machine learning knowledge. So you could replace thousands of lines of uh, code normally written in Python with, uh, with whatever language you want through our REST API or our SDK and literally replace those thousands of lines of code with these three lines, where you basically just authenticate yourself and call either the forecast method or the dot anomaly detection method. At this precise venue, as I was mentioning at the beginning of the presentation, we, we launched this closed uh, beta, and it was overwhelming. We got more than 5,000 companies signing up, companies ranging from very big uh, financial institutions, JP Morgan, and other hedge funds that I'm not gonna mention, to uh, very exciting startups such as uh, the biggest rideshare apps and, and other financial sexy startups are here in the, in the valley. And today, we're gonna try to show you uh, one of the new pieces of research that we're, gonna, uh, that we're very exciting about, which is trying to use TimeGPT in the financial domain. Particularly, we are researching together with uh, NYU uh, Finance Department, particularly with Professor Roberto Gomez Cram, which is a very uh, uh, exciting work. And what we're trying to do is show how to use TimeGPT to exploit systematic biases of equity analysts. And, and that's what we're gonna be presenting today, so I hope you, you enjoy the, the idea. So to set the setting of the problem that we're gonna try to solve, because uh, brief parenthesis, please don't try to forecast assets price directly, that's gonna be impossible, don't do that. But there are other ways where you can try to beat the market. 
So one way is trying to go into what's called earning calls. And earning calls is this event where public companies present the performance that they have met and, and particularly the revenue that they have made over the last uh, quarter, and they share that publicly with investors and analysts. Uh, we're going to define that particular revenue value as, as RT, which is the actual revenue of a specific ticker or company at a specific time T. And we could try to forecast that revenue directly, and thanks to OpenBB and MindCV, now it's very easy. The later Didier is going to show a demo on how you could, in a few steps, and out of the box using OpenBB and TimeGPT forecast uh, revenue. And, and as we can see here, uh, if we compare a uh, fine-tuned version of GPT against other classical autoregressive models that are used all over the world by central banks and other institutions, we see that in uh, both uh, MAE and RMCE error metrics, TimeGPT outperforms the other models. However, does this replace equity analysts? Are we at the place where uh, generative pre-trained models such as TimeGPT can replace equity analysts? And the anticlimactic answer is not, not yet. Uh, but to drive the point home, uh, and for those of you who are new to the, to the field, an equity analyst is a person who specializes, whose every and only single job is at the end of the day trying to predict the market performance of specific tickers. So obviously they are versed in mathematical modeling, but they also have very important information about how specific companies are performing. They speak to other analysts, they like closely follow the regional markets, and they try to make the best prediction of what a company is gonna, or how a company is gonna perform next uh, quarter. And the question is, do they do a good job? And, and to assess that, we have to introduce a new variable, which is the forecasted revenue that a specific analyst, A, did at a specific time T. And as you can see here, uh, they are pretty good. They, they, they do their job well, and that's probably why they earn so much money at top financial institutions all over the world. And, and here you can see how uh, the median analyst is almost twice, or, yeah, twice as accurate as, as time GPT. And, and that's to be expected in the sense that these people specialize in, in, in the problem. So we can conclude that it is very interesting and very amazing what TimeGPT can do against other models. But we can also conclude and see that equity analysts do a pretty good job. But now the question is how good is the job that equity analysts are doing and can we outperform them by another uh, uh, strategy? And for that, uh, to answer that question, uh, and also because uh, we at Nixla like to acknowledge a lot the diversity and the DNA, diverse DNA that we have at the firm. I would like to introduce uh, Azul to continue with the presentation. Hi everyone, thank you Max for introducing me. Thank you Didier and, and Jorge for, for having us. And uh, the question that Max the max just drop is really, really important. And one question arises, are analysts biased? And this is a really important question because if we can determine uh, if there is a bias, we can exploit that bias to improve the forecast of the revenue. So how can we assess if, uh, if there is a systematic bias in the forecast of the analysts? So basically, we can compute the relative errors of the analyst, uh, seeing the actual revenue and comparing it to the forecast of the analyst. So we will have, let me, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. So we will have uh, different errors for the different analysts, and then we can compute an aggregated signal of the errors through the median. So basically, we will compute the median for a specific timestamp, for example, a quarter, and we will have a signal for all the, for all the analysts. And then we can analyze, analyze that variable, M sub T, to see if there is a, a systematic bias. And MT, the variable MT, is really important because if there is no bias, if analysts are unbiased, we would expect that MT would be normally distributed. And if that's the case, the median of MT should be zero. But if we analyze the data, we can see that there is a systematic bias. 
In this plot, in blue, you can see the historical errors of the analyst, and then you can see the median of those errors marked in gray, and also, for reference, we included zero. And as you can see, in a lot of cases, there is a difference between the median and the zero. Here, for example, we can see that the median is above zero. Here, um, we can see the, 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 same, the same process. So we can, we can say that, as, as Max mentioned, analysts are better than time series models. And this is expected because they use a lot of data that it is not uh, available to, to the general public, but they are systematically biased. And this is really important because we can explode that bias to improve our forecast. How can we do that? The first thing we need to do is to forecast those errors. Since they are biased, there is information that TimeGPT can learn to improve the, the accuracy of the forecast of the, of the errors. Once we have the forecast of the errors with TimeGPT, which means that we are forecasting the, the blue line, we can use an expression that we used uh, earlier. We can use this expression, and basically we can put um, the revenue in terms of the forecast of the analyst and the error that we are forecasting. And with that, we will have uh, the forecast of the revenue using the information of the analyst, the forecast actually, um, the forecast uh, of the analyst, and then we can divide that median uh, by one minus the time GPT forecast. And that is the way that we can use that information uh, to compute a uh, forecast of the revenue. And as we can see, using this strategy, uh, time GPT, fine tuned time GPT, uh, has the better has the better performance. And I think this table is really important uh, in the sense that, as you can see, time GPT without fine tuning is the second uh, best model, which means that the fine tuned time GPT is learning from the errors. This means that TimeGPT is able to capture that extra information that the analysts are not capturing. And as we can see, a lot of different models with this strategy now can outperform the median analyst, and we can use our uh, foundational model to even improve even more uh, the forecast of the, of the analyst. So basically, we can conclude that the errors of the analyst provide valuable, valuable information that can be used to improve the forecast uh, accuracy. And in conclusion, using this, this strategy, using the extra information that is not being seen by the, by the analyst, uh, TimeGPT improves the, the revenue forecast by 12% in terms of May and 10% in terms of RMSE. But the good news about this strategy is that we can, we can create an actual trading strategy, and Max will tell us how we could make money with this strategy. So as you see, it's not only that we acknowledge diversity, but when it got more mathematically laden, it was helpful for me to call us all on the stage. Let's, let's write the point home. So we showed how you could use TimeGPT together with the information of the analyst to inform a possible uh, trading strategy. Here we're going to present it. First, we're going to define two percentiles, P lower and P upper. And then we're going to calculate uh, uh, this uh, I lower T and I upper T. And then the strategy is really intuitive. We're going to sell our positions if we believe that the actual forecast of the asset is going to be below uh, sorry, above uh, what the analysts are saying, and otherwise we're gonna buy the position if the asset is performing better, or we predict the asset will perform better than what the analyst, media analysts are saying. And we took that strategy and we created this backtesting graph where if you see uh, the blue line, that's the signal to buy, 
all the vertical uh, gray lines are the earning calls, when the actual companies do the earning calls. And as you can see, uh, here are 11 earning calls, and nine out of 11 earning calls, we predict the right behavior, namely, we buy uh, in the blue line when the asset is gonna indeed go higher. That means that we have a very successful strategy that if starting with $1 in May 2019 and doing the back testing, after three years, which is really a short time for a trading strategy, normally you have long-term long -term trading strategies, we would end with $6. That's 6X in, in, in value creation. And in terms, obviously, of comparing that value creation with the market performance, we are calculating and reporting here the alphas. And that strategy has an alpha of 1.14% every two weeks, which means, again, that you could be making $6 if you started with $1 by following the buying strategy of TimeGPT plus the insights of the analysts. And uh, this concludes the presentation. We really hope that you could uh, enjoy this. And if you want early access to Nixla uh, uh, TimeGPT, please submit your interest at uh, nixla.io, and we're also gonna be after this event upstairs answering particular questions uh, about, about the presentation. Thank you very much, Didier, again. Thank you, Jorge, thank you. Um, Max, you left your laptop here with all the secrets to oh, no. trading. Another trading strategy. <laughs> Um, thank you, Max, for the presentation. I, I guess I, I, I'm gonna become rich with, uh, with your new strategy. And, and honestly, I, I think it's fascinating to see the progress of uh, TimeGPT from the time you presented it to these results. Um, I wanna share with you a, a story of one prototype that we built, and we'll, we'll show you also the, the live, well, not a live demo, I'm gonna show you a video of the demo because live demos tend to sometimes be a pain in the ass, but, um, but I'll show you what we did with um, OpenBB and mixing it with different technologies like Langchain, Lama Index, and of course, Nixa. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is the integration that we built to OpenBB. Um, this is, in our opinion, very um, much one of the most interesting integrations that we have when it comes to financial services, because op um, OpenBB integrates to so many different data sources that through our integration, now you can query all the different data sources as if they were a SQL database. Um, and SQL is such an expressive language for transforming data that it is very useful for analysts. But it's not just useful for analysts, it's also useful for agents that know how to do text to SQL. So you can ask a question, it can translate that question into SQL, especially when the question requires to do some transformations to the data like aggregations or window functions, et cetera. And um, even though the data behind OpenBB doesn't really live in a database that OpenBB has access to, they're just calling other APIs, um, through the integration that we built with, uh, with the DIR, we now can query all of those in SQL. So let me show you, actually, let's go for a, a live demo. Why not? Um, so I am not gonna run this command because I'm not gonna share the public key to OpenBB, but you can connect, uh, once you write an integration to MyZB, you can connect that as if it was a real database, even though it's just a virtual database. And then you can query things like, um, it's, yeah, this is just running this uh, select from OBB crypto search and it's giving you some information. Uh, let's search for another one that is a little bit more interesting. Let's look at the news about companies where companies Apple and see what we get. Yeah, so these are news about Apple. Um, and essentially every single command that you have on OpenBB now looks like a table. And those are tables that you can query 
and all the PostgreSQL is available on it. And what MyZB does is that it takes that query, translate that, translates that into an OpenBB command, and then brings that into memory, and then does, does like the final transformations in memory. Now, this is cool because now you can do the other part, which is, uh, no, this is not what I want to show you. You can now combine this with other technologies. For example, you can say, I want to build an agent that can do text to SQL, and I can ask questions in natural language, and those questions will be translated into SQL, and I will get a result. Or I can take one of those data sources that, for instance, the news, and I can build a knowledge base using Lama index, um, and I can then add that as another skill into an agent, and then I can combine these things. So um, I'm going to show you how we actually build that. We, we built uh, an agent that has a skill that is a test to SQL skill and can translate questions when it knows that that question can be a question that can be answered via SQL. And then it also has a skill for um, answering questions from a knowledge base. And um, we can also connect that agent to a production system. Uh, and what I mean by a production system is that usually people already have chatting systems within their companies. So you can connect these agents to uh, Microsoft Teams or um, Slack. My MyZB allows you to do these things as well with very single, simple commands. Again, because we can treat anything as virtual tables in a database. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a knowledge base. Uh, I'll show you the video, but I'm also going to show you some of the queries. Um, a knowledge base is uh, a combination of a few things. If we go back here, it's uh, you need an embedding uh, model. And then you're going to take that embedding model and run it for the data that you want to get um, your knowledge base on and you're gonna store that in a vector database. And then every time you have a question, you translate the question into a vector, and then you find in your vector database where are the, most clo the closest ones, and then you feed that into a model that will generalize the answer. Um, that's RAG as it is, but uh, we don't actually build the, the, the RAG uh, interaction. We partner or we integrate with technology. In this case, we do it with Lama Index. So um, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it, hey, I want to uh, create these embeddings um, and I'm going to use Cohere and the, co the embeddings from Cohere. And if I were to run this command, which I already have run before, what I have now is a model that looks like a table. Essentially, if I select from this table and in the word statement I put the text, in the output I'm going to get a table that has the text and also the embeddings. And um, I'm going to create a view just for simplicity of how to organize my data. In this case, this view is going to query uh, the OpenBB world news. And I'm going to add an index to each one of those news for simplicity down the line, which I'm going to need to create the rack system. So um, this view is already created, but if I query this view, oh, sorry, actually it's not created. And now I can query this view. And essentially, it's just giving me like an index, a date, and then like all the different news that I'm going to now feed into a uh, vector database. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another database. Um, in this case, I'm going to use uh, Lama Index and with a backend of uh, ChromaDB, where I'm going to store these actual vector representations. And I'm going to create a table that is the index. So I'm going to create a table that is going to call World News Index. Essentially, where I'm going to store all the embeddings for each of the news that I have. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert into the knowledge base um, for every select, every row that I have in that select statement. And now I have my knowledge base. Now, MyZB allows you to create a job to do this every second. So every time there's new data, it will update the index. That creates a real-time knowledge base. But um, how this looks like is that now you can query, let me actually show you some of those examples here. Um, yeah, once you, once you create the index, now you can ask questions that will you know, do semantic search over the, the index. Anyway, this will make sense in a second once I put it together with, uh, with the other pieces. But what we have now is a rack system created with like 
five SQL commands. Um, and this rack system is already living in a server. So you can uh, query it from any MySQL client, uh, from any client that can actually talk to a MySQL or Progress database, but also you can plug it to other systems within MySQL, which is what we're gonna do now. Um, so now that we have a knowledge base, uh, let me tell you a little bit about how we glue things together in MySQL. We call these things skills, and essentially you can say, I wanna create a skill from a model, and skills right now can be either knowledge bases, text to SQL skills, forecasting models, or any of the models that MySQL supports. And then you can um, join those skills into an agent, uh, and the agent in this case is gonna be powered by Langchain. And um, now you can, to the, to the agent, you can also specify a model that governs the main prompts for, for the agent. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm gonna show you the SQL syntax for this, and then I'm gonna show you the, the actual running for that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to create a Langchain model. And in this Langchain model, uh, we're gonna use GPT-4 as the actual LLM. And uh, we just give it a very simple prompt, which is answer the input in a very simple way. The second thing that we're gonna do is we're going to create a skill based on the knowledge base that we created before. So we're gonna say, remember that model that I can query in, in a kind of semantic search approach? I'm going to add it as a skill. So I'm going to create a model, uh, I'm going to create a skill with that model, and I'm going to give it a simple description so that the agent knows what skill to use depending on the task. And in this case is, well, anything that has to do with world news, please use this skill. The next thing that you're gonna do is, I'm going to add another skill, which is a text to SQL skill. And this is one of the interesting ones because since we added OpenBB as a virtual database and I can query anything in OpenBB as SQL, I can tell it, hey, you know, for a question that is not a knowledge base question, try to make it a SQL statement. And here we just give it a few tables. In theory, you could give all the different tables that exist in OpenBB, but for the simplicity of this, we're only gonna give it the crypto price historical and the current price historical. And then here we're saying, hey look, anything that has to do with historical prices of assets, then uh, use the skill. And then the last thing is to stitch all of it together. So you say, I'm going to create an agent that has the demo model, which is this one, the Langchain model, and uh, I'm going to add the skills that we just created. So that's essentially this part. I don't know if there's much to show other than this, but let me see. Just gonna play really quick. Anyway, you can see here how we're running each of the steps that I described to you. I just wanted to show you that th this runs because the, the promise for this particular um, you know, meeting is that we will show you things that you can actually use today. So um, in the span of 10, 15 minutes, you can build the system that I'm showing to you as well if you try to be combined with these other tools. But anyway, here you have now the agent that combines the skills that we prepared. And the last part is um, you take that agent and you want to plug it into a chat system, such as, uh, in this case, Slack. So that now when you ask a question, again, when you connect Slack to MySDB, every messages or all the messages on Slack are a virtual table. And then you can say, okay, select from the messages table where the last message was greater than the previous one and that gives you only the delta. And then you can join that with the agent, and essentially what it does is that for every message, sends it to the agent, out you get the response from the agent, and then you can insert that back into the Slack system. So it's, it's a SQL query that allows you to, to do this. Of course, we created a simplification for that. Uh, we created a simpli simplification for that that allows you to do this in a single statement, essentially. So you don't have to like do the joining, et cetera. We do the create chatbot um, command, which is, just this, right? You connect to Slack, and then you say, I want to create a chatbot that uses as a database the, um, the, the Slack system that I just created, and then the agent that I, that I, um, that I just generated a few steps back. And um, let me show you how that looks, just for the sake of you guys seeing this thing running.
Yep. So now that we have a chatbot, um, we have the full picture uh, complete. Essentially, we created a uh, knowledge base that can do and answer questions from documents in OpenBB about the news. We created another skill that does text to SQL, and we plug that into a Langchain agent, and then we plug that agent into OpenBB. And the results are the following. So um, you can now go into the channel that we created this, angel, uh, this agent on. You say hello, that wakes up the Langchain agent. Um, it will respond with like nothing because it has nothing to say um, other than this. But now you can ask a question such as, hey, what are the average, oh, I'm gonna stop the speed of this so you can see the, the magic happening. So you can say, what is the average, whoa, what is the average price for ETH to US dollars? Now, what it does is that it gets into Langchain and Langchain now knows that this is a text to SQL skill and it will try to write that query. So I don't know if you guys can see it here. It's at the very bottom. Um, yeah, it's, the query is at the very bottom of, of the screen, but it's like select the average open price from OpenBB crypto price historical, where symbol is ETHUSD. Um, and what is fascinating is that this first query actually fails, and then, uh, oh no, actually, this one doesn't fail. It says, yeah, I got it. It's 1748, and then it returns that, that into the Slack agent, and you get a result back in Slack. So the average price for ETH is this and this. Now, you can ask another question. Uh, what is the all-time high rate for um, Canadian dollar to US dollar? This is not just asking a simple select statement. Now this is an aggregate function for uh, that table. But anyway, here it also notes that it's a SQL text to SQL query. It tries to write the query and then it gets an error. So it tries to modify that query again um, where it does the aggregate function on the max rate. And eventually after two tries, it gets the real uh, result. And now it knows that this result is a table, so it is going to do another operation in SQL to, to get the result that it wants. So it does that, runs that final query, and it gets the result, sends it back into Slack, and um, it will, will give you the response. Now you can ask another question that is not a text to SQL question. For example, what's happening in Russia right now? Um, I guess a lot of people ask this question all the time. And um, it will know that this is not an actual text to SQL query. It will be a knowledge base. So it will go into the knowledge base, retrieve the information from the news, and then it will return the most relevant information that is relevant to that question back into the, into the uh, agent, and then the agent will publish that into Slack. So it will say, well, currently, another one in Russia uh, is that the man has been sentenced for 10 days in jail. Well, nothing really eventful. And then you can say, well, how about Canada? This is actually another element that is pretty cool. Um, MindsDB, when you create these agents, understands that you need to pass the context of previous conversations, et cetera, so it has like long-term memory and short-term memory. It will pass this conversation. It knows that the last question that you ask about Russia, and here now you're saying just like, hey, what about Canada? Uh, it knows that you're asking about news in Canada, so it will also wake up the knowledge base agents and it will try to get some information about Canada. And it will give you this information about Canada. Nothing really happens in Canada most of the times, but... <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so that's, that's a demo of combining multiple technologies um, and gluing all of this in a very declarative approach, uh, which is using SQL. Uh, a very declarative and expressive language for this type of operations. Anyway, I'm gonna hand it over to Jerry.
Cool. Hey, everyone. OK. That was, a, that was a great presentation by Jorge. Um, and today, I'll tell you about building LLM maps over financial data. Uh, I'm Jerry. I'm co-founder and CEO of Llama Index. Uh, Llama Index is a data framework for building LLM applications. Um, great. OK. So first of all, maybe just a quick show of hands. How many of you guys have heard about like retrieval augmented generation, RAG? Just, OK. It's like most of you. Um, that's great. So we'll go over a quick overview of that. Uh, some of the advanced use cases you can tackle, as well as you know, stuff that you can build over uh, finance data. So Llama Index, a quick refresher, is a data framework for building LLM apps. Uh, it contains two main components. One is data management, as well as kind of data querying for your LLM application. Um, so the key mission that we try to take is, you know, ChatGPT, LLMs, GPT-4, they're all great, but how do you actually uh, connect them with your own sources of data? Stuff that ChatGPT doesn't uh, inherently have knowledge uh, over because it's not pre-trained over that. So we offer the variety of tools, so you, you know, as the AI engineer, as a software engineer, can basically uh, create this overall pipeline to basically connect the data into the LLM. Uh, and the way we do this is through this uh, mechanism called you know, in-context learning retrieval augmentation. We fix the model, and we just figure out a way to basically wire that data into the input prompt of the model. So there's basically three main components. You know, you start off with your data sources, your um, you know, Notion, Slack, uh, databases, uh, PDFs, different file types. You first figure out how to ingest that data. So we have um, a kind of a site called Llama Hub, which is a source of a bunch of different data loaders that you can use to connect your data sources. We then have ways for you to store and index your data in, in vector stores, graph stores, um, kind of SQL databases, a variety of different um, data storage mechanisms. And then we have both simple to advanced retrieval and query strategies over your data that combine the LLM with uh, kind of the, the data that you retrieve to actually generate an answer uh, that you have in mind. So first, let's go through just the basic uh, RAG stack of how, how you know, retrieval augmented generation works. It really consists of two main components, ingestion parsing as well as querying. This uh, overall uh, kind of process takes five lines of code in the quick start tutorial of Llama Index. Um, to go over data ingestion and parsing first, um, first we split up, uh, you know, take in, uh, we, we take some input documents and we split up these documents into a set of even chunks, right? So each chunk is a piece of raw text. We generate an embedding for each chunk with uh, some sort of embedding model, like OpenAI embeddings, uh, hugging face. And then we store each chunk into a vector database. And then we take those retrieve pieces of text and we basically throw it into the context window of the LLM. This is how you do RAG, right? You just like take all these random documents that are stored in your vector database, find the most relevant ones, and then put them into the context window. You can manually replicate this process by just opening up ChatGPT, opening up, finding some web page, right, and just copying and pasting the thing into uh, the, the input text box, which I'm sure many of you have done. Okay, and this is just like some code snippet that basically shows how you can get started. Uh, this is in the quick start tutorial, right? So nothing super fancy but it shows the process of loading, indexing, and querying. Okay, so now let's get to the interesting stuff. What are kind of, for instance, chat over your data use cases and finance that you can tackle? And some of these might involve, uh, you know, more advanced uh, kind of um, abstractions than what you can typically do in that five lines of code. The first use case we'll talk about is multi-document comparisons. How do you actually ask complex questions over multiple documents as opposed to just doing the standard stuff of asking a question about a specific detail in one document? The second is how do you actually deal with embedded tables within a document? And that part's actually pretty interesting. If you look at a SEC filing, there's a bunch of random tables in there, right, which are tabular data. How do you mix, how do you index that data properly? Um, and then the third is just some sort of like text to domain specific language uh, type illustration. And we've um, you know, worked with uh, DDA a lot in the past and, and we have a great demo of how do you actually uh, use potentially LLMs to help augment that natural language interface uh, to an interface like OpenBB open source. Great. First use case, let's talk about multi-document comparisons. Um, here as an example, um, imagine the question is, compare the 2021 10K filings for Uber and Lyft, right? Let's say that's your question, and you have, you have like the Uber and te uh, Lyft 10K filings. So the main issue with the naive RAG stack is that if you just do top K retrieval, like look up the most similar chunks, and say all your financial document chunks are all indexed in a vector database, you're not necessarily guaranteed to get back the relevant context that's actually gonna help you answer this question. 
So if you ask this question, you know, query a vector database, give me the top four most relevant documents, you might get back some stuff from Uber, uh, maybe one chunk or none from Lyft, or the vice versa. You're not really guaranteed to get back the relevant context in a structured manner because you're just depending on embedding search to give you back the right answers all the time. So what you can do instead, right, and you've seen this a little bit uh, kind of in the previous presentations where you actually use an agent to do some sort of like query decomposition, is you can basically have the LLM at the beginning part of that process. Take a complex question, uh, use a prompt, an agent loop, uh, to basically break that into sub-questions. Um, so in Llama Index, this is called the sub-question query engine. So describe revenue or growth uh, of Uber in 2021, associate a tool, right, or data source with each question, and then execute those queries independently and combine them at the end. And so basically what you're doing is generating a query plan over a more complex question, executing each of those independently. When you execute them independently in more modular components, you're more guaranteed to have the relevant context for the question, and you can combine them, right? And so here, for instance, you get the top two most relevant chunks from Uber, top two most relevant chunks from Lyft, and then this basically gives you the right results. We have a notebook walkthrough over here. I'm gonna just count to three. Uh, I'll share these slides later anyways, uh, so don't worry about it if you miss the link. Um, and then maybe one quick demo I wanna show is just SEC Insights, which basically leverages this and builds an agent over it. So, you know, basically this whole uh, combo about SEC documents, we built this app uh, internally, mostly to dog food the framework, and we also fully open source this on GitHub. And so actually we've talked to a few financial institutions that are basically just using this and, and cloning it. It's MIT licensed, so feel free to rip it, clone it, do whatever you want with it. Um, and so here as an example, we have Amazon and Microsoft, uh, year 2022, start your conversation. See there's like a PDF viewer for both Amazon and Microsoft. Let's ask uh, a question. What are their main business focus areas? Uh, it's a pretty softball question, but basically this involves looking up both documents, right? And so here is the SEC filing for Amazon. Here's one for Microsoft. You see that as this uh, question ex is executing, it's one, breaking it down in the, into the two underlying sub-questions, right? By given this question, you're dynamically generating like the query plan. Um, here it's actually streaming back the final response. I'll wait for it to finish but go back into the intermediate results. You can see the answers for each of these, right? So the main business focus areas of Amazon or blah, blah, blah. Uh, here's the main focus areas of Microsoft. And you can actually see the sources uh, for each of the sub-questions. So you go in, um, scroll to the right. You can see the PDF highlights in the source document, right? So in the name of transparency, if you actually want to make sure you, the response is grounded in some context, this is a way that you can do that. You know, you can go through the Amazon documents, see where the focus areas are, are drawn from, same thing for Microsoft. And of course, this is a function of your chunk size and you can play around with these parameter settings. And finally, get back a response. So that's uh, one example, right? And, and this is a classic use case for kind of multi-document analysis. You can generalize this to hundreds, even thousands of documents by just adding an additional layer on top where you do some sort of like tool retrieval or basically kind of like mapping between uh, the uh, stuff at the document level, retrieve stuff first, and then go in and try to actually have an agent act over the subset of retrieved documents. The next thing I'll talk about, and this is a second use case, is how do you actually deal with PDFs with embedded tables, right? This is just some random Wikipedia article about a lot of rich people in the world. This is just billionaires. Um, but really what's relevant is also, for instance, like in an SEC filing, you have a bunch of random tables in, in a document. And basically, some of the naive stuff you do in terms of top K rag falls apart, right? When you actually just chunk up this document. If you chunk up a table and just try doing retrieval on that raw, like, you know, text parse table, you're not gonna get really good results when you ask a question. Like if you ask, uh, for instance, like what are the richest uh, billionaires in, in 2023, and you just parse this like normally with your, a naive rag, you're not actually gonna retrieve this table that's gonna give you back the relevant answers. One general concept that you can kind of think about, especially if you're applying LLMs to these complex documents, is model data hierarchically, right? So basically, given some sort of complex PDF with a lot of stuff inside, uh, model each uh, chunk or entity as like a node, and each node can actually reference a sub-entity, and that models the embedded object. That sub-entity could be a table, it could be a chart, but basically what you first do is retrieve at the node level, and then recursively go down into each uh, chunk to see if there's underlying entities that you can try to actually query. In the instance of a table, this node might actually be a summary of the table, so it's more amenable for retrieval, 
but then it links the underlying data. And so this, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go through the notebook walkthrough and, and uh, just very briefly, but maybe just one thing I want to quickly show is if we just take the Tesla uh, 10K, right? This is like the SEC document, it's very long. You can see there's a lot of random tables in here, right? This is one table, this is another table, this is like um, cost of revenue. Going back into here, right? We basically have some abstractions where one, we use like unstructured, which is like a powerful document parser, um, in combination with some llama index abstractions to basically parse this into an overall document graph. And okay, the results were cleared, so just trust me on this. Um, but basically, when we asked the question, you know, what was the revenue in 2020, um, over this overall document, this SEC document, where the revenue numbers are really present mostly in the tables, right, you actually get back the right results when you do this recursive modeling over the document, um, where the tables are explicitly treated as subnodes. Whereas if you just do the standard, like the baseline, you ask this question, you're not gonna get back uh, the right result. And of course, the results are cleared, so you're gonna have to trust me, but you know, I've run this before, so. The last thing I kind of want to talk about is um, some, some pretty interesting ideas. And, and so, you know, we, we've um, chatted with the Open, uh, OpenBB folks, and one interesting idea here is um, sometimes your data is very unstructured, and so you could, for instance, like dump your ICC documents into a vector database, um, index them using some of the techniques I mentioned before. But sometimes, you know, you actually have a structured interface to actually query your data. Um, this could be SQL to query your SQL database. In the case of OpenBB, it's actually, you know, they have their own language in terms of like, uh, you know, think Bloomberg's terminal commands, right, to actually query for different types of financial data. And they have basically this like handbook, uh, like this whole guide uh, of instructions of like these commands and what each toggle means. And so what if instead of using the vector DB to actually store the raw financial data, use a vector DB to actually index the handbook, right? And so what you do is during query time, right, during query time, you ask a natural language question. Uh, then the system will actually do retrieval from the handbook to look up the most relevant OpenVB commands given this question, right? And translate the question into that OpenVB command they can then execute against the system. And so it's like retrieval augmented text to some domain specific language. Uh, this idea applies to a lot of different use cases, not just this. This could apply to text to SQL. This could apply to, uh, of course, like OpenBB. It could apply to like GraphQL. Basically, any sort of structured query language you come up with, you can add retrieval on top of it, right, to ground uh, what the LM is inferring in some context. And this gives you a powerful kind of translated domain specific language they can then execute to actually get back a result. And so in this image right here, you know, for instance, here is the prompt, uh, for instance, of, of how you actually do this, like from the ArcVirus help text, provide the terminal command for query text. Uh, and this is just an example of the prompt that does that translation from the natural language query uh, to the structured query. Uh, and of course, there's a bunch of instructions. And you can see the translated command right here is actually, you know, um, uh, kind of uh, this, right? And, and basically, you, you um, execute this and you get back a graph of like uh, consumer price indices over different countries. And of course, lastly, I uh, want to thank MindsDB for, for hosting and just want to call out, I know Jorge just demoed this, we do have an integration with MindsDB. You can basically, if you're using MindsDB as a overall like kind of SQL-like interface, you can easily integrate Lamindex, which Jorge just showed um, but you can basically get a lot of the power of llama index abstractions by just doing a select statement um, using, using SQL. And you can join this with like a question answering table, right? So you can actually basically kind of, um, given a set of questions, get the set of answers from it. That's basically it. Um, last thing is, you know, we're, we're kind of thinking, always talk, uh, interested in talking to users to basically kind of learn more about your use cases and pain points. So if you're building LLMs in the enterprise setting, especially in the financial use case, we love to chat. And so this is just a simple Google form, love to set up some office hours. Thank you.
Hi. Should I use this one? I think so. Um, hi, everyone, again. Um, you got me two times today. Um, it's a very exciting time, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we've been working for in the terminal, which actually Jerry just shown how it looks like. is a common line interface. Um, we've had over 130,000 all-time installs from like people at JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, to students at universities uh, being able to do coursework and exams uh, through the platform. So it's been great. Um, but looking back, I mean, the terminal kind of like, you know, it's a common line interface. So for technical people like myself, I love it. But it's not for your everyday user, and here are the sketches that I found of the first like prototype that <laughs> that I wrote. And I mean, the charts were using like Matplotlib. That wasn't in, even an interactive back then. Um, and so we have an amazing team, uh, almost 20 people. Ming has had over 100 interviews with users. And so one of the main things that uh, we figured it out is that the user experience wasn't the best. And so we really focus on okay, let's we we have you know we have runway uh, we are VC backed uh, we have an empty sheet let's start from there let's start take it one step at a time and make like the terminal that you know that matches the 21st century we are on and so today I want to announce um, the Terminal Pro um, this is what it looks like <laughs> thank you <laughs> so yeah so it's it's not like fully released for every of you for every one of you today you're going to have access to it um, but it's like uh, early alpha beta let's say and I want to really show you uh, it I'm been, like if you know me I don't really like presentations I like to to show stuff um, so I'm gonna show you and one interesting thing I'm gonna try to show all of the technologies that were presented a priori in the terminal pro and so yeah but there's one that I need to do a video because of the time it takes, and my dogs are at home waiting, so, uh, but all the others, I should be able to do them. Um, so, yeah, so this is our home page. Um, we have a news, I mean, if you are an analyst, you know how important news are. Um, one of the things that we wanted to be able to do in news is click to check an article, uh, and we have an AI shot here, because, I mean, who has time to read the entire thing, right? So. So let's say, yeah, this is gonna be hard. <laughs> Thank you. So let's say that I want to summarize this, um, and I want it under 30 words, um, under 30 words. And so let's see if this works. Thank you, Max. <laughs> so yeah, here you have a summary of uh, uh, whatever happened here. Move over Barbie Jeep, cozy coupe. Coupe? A cyber, a cyber truck for kids has arrived. Um, anyway, uh, a cool thing that we thought about that is now you have here the summary and you can keep going, you can keep asking questions. But more important than that, you've got uh, tickers mentioned, right? And so we wanted a, uh, a way to be able to do like investment research fa fast and efficiently. So one thing that we allow you to do is create a dashboard directly from here, which you can see that it just uh, arrived here, but you can also uh, go into the charting directly. So let's say I click on the charting, uh, I go into a charting of Tesla, uh, you can zoom in, zoom out. This is powered by TradingView, which means that you get all the benefits from it. So if I want to do a MACD indicator, I can just click here and you'll have the MACD indicator. Um, our team realized after speaking with a lot of uh, analysts that one of the things they do is overlay financials. So we also added that because why not? Um, so you can see here that you have balance sheet income statement and I can click in one of them quarterly and now I can add it and um, it should be added here. And now if I zoom out, you have access to uh, the data of how it moves over time, which is, which is pretty cool. And you saw that earlier that I created a dashboard. And so what, what is a dashboard? So a dashboard is a collection of widgets. Um, it's a collection of widgets that uh, we created, but you can also create. And I'm going to go into that in a second. Um, but yeah, it looks, it looks like this. Um, you, you have like multiple, you, get, you have tabs. This is fully customizable. Uh, I can create folders to organize information. Um, if I go into financials, one cool thing that we allow you to do is to uh, transpose the data. So let's say that you prefer the data to be in this format, you know, because like for instance, it's better to see in terms of like time series what it looks like. And now let's say you want quarterly. And now let's say that we want to use uh, an Xless new model. What we can do <laughs> is I can select how much data I want here, um, and then I can um, go here above and click on the Nixla icon, and this should generate uh, doing like a forecasting of the revenue uh, for Apple, uh, Tesla in this case for the next 30 days. 
thank you. And I mean, the Nixla team has done an impressive work. It's ve very, very easy to play with uh, the model. And so if you want a bigger forecast window or you want to change anything else, you can just configure it directly on the widget. Um, this is a custom made widget. I think it took us like a day to, to build. Um, so super easy to add things. Um, then let's say that um, I'm looking into, let's go back to the overview, which is where I was. And let's say that I like what I see here and I want to send this to my manager with my notes. So I allow to create a text widget and, sa and say, uh, this is great. I can change the, the theme to light mode. Uh, sorry to burn your eyes. And uh, I can export a report uh, and then the report gets exported and then I can send it to my manager with my, my notes on it, which is again, great for um, faster uh, investment research. And all of these will be shareable in the, in the future as well. Oh, here we go. So just to show you that it's here. Uh, yeah, and it looks nice. Um, so, so far I've showed only Nixla, so let's show how we, we integrate with the other guys. <laughs> um, so one of, one of the things is that we wanted to focus not just on the analysts, but also on the quants, because we really think that the, the best investment research teams, like, you know, Citadel to Sigma, all of these uh, uh, hedge funds, um, they are, they're really good because they build at the intersection of not just analyzing the data, but also bringing their own data sets and bringing their own alpha and then combining them together. And so one thing that we allow you to do is to bring your own data onto the platform. Uh, again, we have like an open ecosystem. The platform is open source. Uh, the pro is not, but we still wanted to have the, the, uh, the open source being able to benefit uh, the Terminal Pro. And so we allow you to, to uh, bring your own backend. And so right now I'm gonna go here to these, which I r uh, I'm running a backend using MindsDB. In this case, I'm using their cloud. Uh, solution and I just get home rentals because it was the easiest thing to add. And so I can just copy these endpoints. Um, what I do have here is using Python and fa fast API because uh, it's a technology that we are familiar with. Uh, and then I create this widget.json file, which basically is um, a language that OpenVB can interpret and render as a widget. And you can, you can customize this quite a lot. Right now I'm just gonna show you the table, which is the simplest case, but you can really get fancy here. <laughs> so you can like do bar shards, you can do like plotly. Um, and so what it looks like is if I go now here and I add it here and I'm gonna call this guy MindsDB. So I'm gonna test. Uh, okay, sorry, I had created this earlier. So I'm gonna remove this one just to show that I can add it from scratch. So add backend, I'll add it here. I call it MindsDB, test, okay, and add it, okay. So now on my widgets, what you see is OpenVB API, which is all the endpoints that we support on Pro. And then you see the MindsDB one that I just added. And so I can create a new dashboard. I can click here and I, I think it's home predictions or something. Oh, here we go, home rental predictions. I have it here. I think this one takes like two, three seconds to load. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I need jokes, sorry. <laughs> ah, here we go. Um, and yeah, so you have here the, the MindsDB integration. This is data like in real time, so if it changes and I refresh my page, it will change. I get to benefit all of the features that Terminal Pro allows. So one of them is, for instance, chat with widgets. So in this case, I can ask, oh, I'm just gonna do something. Um, so I'm gonna say, what is the rental price Oh, actually, did this one earlier. So I'm gonna ask, how many square foot does as a home in Alcatraz have, which is this one, with location poor, with uh, zero rooms and one bathroom, which is this one here. So I'm gonna click here, and we're gonna see if the result is uh, 997, which is what we were expecting. Uh, oh, that's fun. Wait, let me try, let me try again. Yeah, that's the thing with demos. Um, try again. Oh no, it's actually correct. <laughs> yeah, it's actually correct. <laughs> yeah, so I was expecting the rental price, but I'm actually asking the uh, square feet. Um, let me ask the rental price. Uh, what is the rental price in, the cool thing is that it doesn't, the English doesn't even need to be perfect, which is great for me, because yeah, it's not my first language. <laughs> so here we have 997. <laughs> and, and then you also have the, the other kind of features that we have, which you can, for instance, generate charts from raw data. Um, so if I do this, 
I should have a chart directly and then you can download it if you want. And it's like super customizable. Uh, we really focus on making it efficient for, um, for analysts and, and quants teams. And so, yeah, now we have Nixon, MindsDB. So how do we do integrate with uh, Lama Index? That, that's a fun one. So I'm gonna show you basically what Jerry talked about where you can, if you have files, you can give them to uh, Lama Index and they just do a great work at the RAG pipeline. So if I add um, price targets by analyst, and then I'm gonna add the management team. So here are two widgets that I just added, and what I want to do is I want to export this data as a CSV, that's great. I want to export this one as a CSV, that's also great. And now I want to add this AI document. And this AI document is powered by Lama Index, and basically I can choose the files, and you can see that I've done this before. And okay, uh, I'm uploading them. Okay, it worked. And now I'm gonna ask a question, and I'm gonna ask a question that is here. So let's do the following. I'm going to ask uh, in this data, what was the uh, lowest price target given to Apple? And the, the answer should be 82. Let's see. Nice. And <laughs> thank you. And to show that you know this is has access to both uh, documents, and you can you can give more. You can what Jerry was saying is basically our goal is to allow you to add any type of document that you want here. Um, I'm gonna do now with the compensation. So who? has the test thank you yeah can I hold this is, I think, the last one. The other one is a video, so. Oh, here we go. Dia salary at Apple is earned by Mr. Timothy D. Cook, obviously, um, with a compensation of 16 uh, million? Billion? Yeah, a lot of money. Um, and we can, <laughs> we, can, uh, um, we can order the, the, um, uh, the column, and this is one of the things that we allow you to do. So here it just says 16 million, but I mean, those 400,000 is, is a lot of money. So let's make sure that we can see them. So I can go to the settings and I can select more decimal places, and now you should be able to see blah, the rest. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is the Lama Index. And now finally, I want to show you how we incorporate uh, Langchain. And so Harrison did an amazing work. He basically explained the entire architecture, how it works, and the, the, the problem with it is that it still takes a bit of time, but the results are incredible because it can literally make uh, queries and prompts that are super complicated uh, in terms of like there's reasoning, it uses the previous output. And so I'm gonna show you a video because um, this one takes a bit of time to run. Um, so it's just basically due to time, not yeah anything else. Um, so I hope you can see my screen. So what I do here is I'm gonna click on the top uh, Am I? Oh, no, here's the, the prompt. So the prompt is the one that um, Arison was talking about. So what we do is, I'm gonna pause just to go through it. So we check first what are the Tesla peers. Then we go on each of those and we get the highest market cap. Bear in mind that OpenBB doesn't have an endpoint that's called market cap, is within the fundamentals overview endpoint. So it needs to go find the market cap within that endpoint. Then on the ticker that has the highest market cap, get to the most recent price target estimate from an analyst and tell me who he was and on what date he, the estimate was made. So it's, this is a very tricky task. Like it would take quite a bit of time for an analyst to do this from scratch because he needs to access all the data, does reasoning. And so what I do is I, I click above on the copil OpenBB Copilot, which is still um, in development, and I just copy the prompt. And you can see the circle going really fast because this is eight times the speed and that's why I'm not waiting here. <laughs> um, so, yeah. This one we know that's gonna work because, <laughs> yeah, it's a video. <laughs> so you can see like surprised. <laughs> Yay! 
<laughs> so yeah, you can see here that he recognizes that these are the Tesla peers. Among those companies, General Motors is the one that has the highest market cap. The most recent uh, price target estimate for General Motors is $37, which is correct. And then the estimate was made by Dan Levy from Barclays and the date estimate. And so, you know, this is basically saves you a ton of time. And another prompt that we try is, because this one is really deterministic, so it basically just saves an analyst time because you're telling the agent what you want to do. But the interesting thing is you can go in the other direction where you want to learn something from the agent. So you can say something like, you know, go through the fundamentals of Amazon and tell me something that I should, you know, be on the lookout for. And so the agent goes through all those endpoints and because of the way the, the, the model was like trained, it's, it understands, for instance, if the PE ratio is a good for the category that Amazon is in and anything, it can reason about that. And that's really, really impressive. And we really think that, you know, the future uh, is really nearby. And so, um, yeah, this, yeah, this is great. Um, yeah, uh, let me go back to the presentation. Um, yeah, in terms of demos, I think that's what I wanted to share. Um, yeah, and uh, so yeah, I'll give you a bit of time. This is where you can get uh, exclusive early access. Uh, we have uh, above 4,000 people on the wait list now, but because you made an effort to come to the event, everyone that uh, access to will have priority over uh, those folks. And yeah, I know that this is stream, so sorry. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, also if you want to talk more with the team, we'll be uh, uh, upstairs right there, so you can come talk with us, we can show you the pro, uh, we can give you an invite there, and uh, yeah. And yeah, thank you MindsDB for putting this together, thank you uh, for the team of OpenBB for coming all the way from Vietnam, Michigan, and Portugal. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, this has been fun, thank you. All right, thank you very much, everyone. A couple of last things to tell you before we're done. We will not be kicking anyone out for at least another hour, so feel free to network. We have lots more food and drink over here. Again, a reminder, if you need the bathroom, it's just in the back corner over there. We have a lot more events coming up in the new year. If you want to find out about them, please just go to our Luma calendar, um, which is I'm going to put up on the screen right now. Mine's the... Uh, lu.ma forward slash MindsDB. If you're interested in getting a deeper technical explanation of how MindsDB works, tomorrow in this room we have a lunch and learn with this screen and we're going to be doing a demo. So if you want to come to that, just have a look on the Luma calendar. Thank you again to all of the companies that presented tonight. Thank you very much for everyone who came and we would love to see you again soon. See you guys. Thanks. Thanks.